start when you want. Cool. All right, good morning, everybody. Um, welcome back to uh, Mr. D's grade 10 science class. Um, hopefully, you've kind of been doing a little bit of homework over the weekend and you have an idea of uh, some of the magnetic lines things we were talking about from last week. Um, this week, we're going to go one step further. We're going to talk about a little bit of magnetic shielding. Um, so, just to get our minds back in the headspace after a long weekend, um, I want you guys to just kind of talk, uh, turn to each other and talk to each other a little bit about where you see magnets in your life, or if you'd like to be a little bit more specific, if you have any idea where you might have seen magnetic shielding before. So basically blocking certain things from magnetic fields. So take about 30 seconds, and I'll, uh, I'll bring it back after that. Okay, yeah. hey, so we all have a bit of time to think, uh, think about it. Right on. So I think I heard someone say doctor's office at one point. Is that correct? Yes. Dave, okay, so can you tell me where in a doctor's office you would find magnetic shield? Uh, if you're getting an MRI, the block, the wall that they're standing on. Beautiful. So Give the man a prize. Okay, so yeah, not in the MRI machine itself. That's why they have you take off all your magnetic, uh, and you can't go in an MRI if you have magnetic plates or anything like that. Um, but the shielding for the people, for the, for the techs, is definitely important. Um, another one that um, people don't think about too often is for speaker appliances. Um, speakers have powerful magnets in them that drive the subwoofers, and if you have that close to a TV, it can distort the image. So you have to make sure you shield the box. And then the last one, that nobody really think, tends to think about is Earth's magnetosphere. And if you look at um, this diagram here, it's uh, kind of handy, hopefully you can see it in the light. There's a few magnetic lines coming out from Earth there. And I want you guys to kind of keep that idea of magnetic lines in your head because that's gonna be important later. So, for the setup itself, um, what I have set up here is a little paper clip hanging on a thread and it's being held up by these two magnets. Um, they're just bar magnets, nothing fancy. You can see that I can kind of disturb this a little bit it's still going to stay up. Um, and the whole purpose of this experiment is to find out what sample of um, substances here are going to interfere with that magnetic field and are going to be important in magnetic shielding. So to talk about the, the samples here, I have a little bit of aluminum. One of them is just aluminum foil. Another one is a ruler. I have a bit of paper, some cards, and a coaster. Cool. A glass that we're going to introduce. A couple of Tupperware lids for plastic samples. Um, this is a little sample of quarters that I've taped together. I taped it together just to make it easier to kind of put in there. Um, quarters, like nickels, have a high nickel content, so that's our nickel sample. And then the last one is a tin can lid, which actually has um, a decent amount of iron in it. So what I'm going to do is, for each of these substances, I'm going to introduce them between the paper clip and the magnet. And I want you guys to be able to predict and kind of think about... Yes, David, question. What's the paper clip made out of? Um, it's a good question. I believe it would just be regular steel. So there is a bit of um, iron content there as well as iron carbon. Good question though. Okay, um, so yeah, I'm going to start introducing those. But before we get to that, I'm going to switch over to this. And I apologize in advance because I didn't have time this morning to print off one of these for each of you. But before I get into this, I'm going to have you predict which materials are going to interfere with that magnetic field that's holding the paper clip close to the magnet. So if something sort of like this doesn't have to be very neat. Um, just so that we have a, a record of what we're observing here. So materials that you think will affect the field, materials that won't, and then what do you think is going to happen to the paper clip? Is it going to be pulled out stronger because maybe one of these substances strengthens the field? Do you think it's going to drop? It's going to wiggle a little bit? Let's take about, let's say, 75 seconds, and then we'll, uh, we'll come back. Oh, and I want you to explain your prediction as well in the best words you can. If you want to use a diagram, that's great. Go for it. And as you're doing this, if there's any other questions about the setup or what we're going to be doing, make sure to ask. Make sure we're good and ready before we start here.
So as you're finishing up here, uh, I'm just going to throw it to the class. I want you to think about what a reasonable student might think each of these um, substances is going to do to the field. Do you think they will or will not affect the field at all? Um, so again, what a reasonable student would think, it doesn't have to be your own answer. Whenever you're ready, just throw your hand up. Yes, Alex? I think that the, uh, the metallic substances uh, will interfere with the uh, paper clip, so aluminum, nickel, and iron. Perfect. And the other glass, paper, and plastic will not. Okay, um, so for the metallic ones, why do you think because they're metallic they're going to affect the magnetic field? I feel that just because they're uh, like they will be like more dense with uh, with material, so therefore there'll be uh, there's gonna be more um, material that could interfere with that magnetic field potentially. Great, it's a great explanation. Um, this, yes. Here. I'm confused. If it, is it that it will allow the magnetic force in, or that it will block it? Um, what I want to know is which ones do you think will do which? So let's say for aluminum, for example, do you think it will or will not? Right, but she's which what? Like what? Like because it, it just says will and will not. She's so asking I'm which curious. what will or will not refers to. Like is oh will will, it will will block or will allow? I don't. I'm just confused. Will it affect the magnetic field in any way? Oh okay. Yes. Is it going to change it at all, or will the magnetic okay. field just pass? Okay. Okay. Right. Thank you. Good question. Um, does anyone want to say something about some of the other substances we haven't uh, talked about yet? Well, I don't think paper is going to do much. Okay. Because it's want. thin, and I've played with papers and magnets before. Okay, so past experience. That's good. We base a lot of our um, scientific theses on what we've experienced before, what we've seen in the physical world, so good point. Okay, and someone want to take a stab at one of the last two, glass or plastic? Mm. Whether they will or will not. Yeah. Mm, oh, another reasonable student might think that the aluminum and the nickel and iron would not affect the magnetic field because it, like, it's not going to change how it works. Like, it's not going to interfere with it. Okay, though. so no interference. Just throw that in there. Awesome. Okay, so now that we have a few different <coughs> examples on the board, we'll leave glass and plastic as kind of like the uh, controls. We're not really sure yet. Um, so I want you guys to either close your eyes or put your head down, and I'm going to go through each of the materials, and I want you to put your hand up if you think it will or will not affect the field, and I'm going to write down what the majority of the vote was, or whether it will or will not. Okay, and if you can't um, handle this, I'd ask you to step out. It's important that everybody has their eyes closed. Okay, so the first substance, aluminum. Raise your hand if you think it will affect the field. Okay, next one is glass. Okay, the next one is paper. How about nickel? Remember the quarters. We got iron. And last but not least, plastic. Okay, you can open your eyes. Thanks for voting. Awesome. Okay, so now I think we can jump right into it. Um, if it was a bit of a smaller class and we had some more time, I'd definitely let you guys kind of play around with the manipulatives and you'd be able to see it yourself, but for the sake of brevity, um, I'm just going to show you guys. Um, if you can't see anything or anything, let me know. I want to make sure everybody observes this. And as you're going through this, if you want to create a little observe section to see, all right, so write down what you're seeing as it goes. And like I said, feel free to ask questions. Okay, so I'm going to start with some aluminum. This one's just the tin foil. Everybody see that? Not a whole lot of movement there. I think the thread's moving a bit just because of the wind resistance. And the ruler's doing the exact same thing. Alright, so aluminum's done. We'll go to cards to some paper. A um, couple cards. No real difference. I think I might have bumped it there, but... And then... Uh, So nothing seems to be happening there, okay. Got some glass. 